Hello Scrum Masters, welcome to Planning Meeting Facilitation. This is the second of three major videos in this section. The previous video was General Facilitation Overview. Make sure that you've watched that video before watching this one because it contains information that we'll be using in this video. The next video is Retrospective Meeting Facilitation and is the third and final video in this major section. Here's the nitty gritty of what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to divide up the planning meeting preparation into three parts. What you do before the meeting, what you do during the meeting, and what you do after the meeting. The outcome of this video is that you'll have a clear understanding of what you need to do to facilitate the sprint planning meeting. So let's start with the before. What do you need to do before you walk into the sprint planning meeting? The first step is to make sure that the PBIs or user stories at the top of the backlog are ready. Not all teams use user stories, so I'm using the more general term PBI or product backlog item. If you are using user stories, you'll make sure that everything has a story point, that things are sized right and more generally follow UINVEST, which remember stands for understandable, independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, sized right and testable. Stories typically have acceptance criteria. You'll need to make sure that any additional information is included in the PBI or user story. And finally, I often like to describe how things are going to be reviewed during the review meeting in the user story or PBI itself. Next, you'll need to know who the attendees are. The product owner and the development team are obviously required. Is there going to be anyone else at the meeting? And if so, are they chickens? Are they pigs? Probably not, because then they would be part of the development team. So make sure that you know what the complete list of attendees is for the meeting. Third, how much time is the meeting going to take? The typical time is eight hours for a four hour week sprint, four hours for a two week sprint, and two hours for a one week sprint. Let's continue with what you need to do before. You need to communicate with the product owner about the state of the product backlog. And remember that one of your responsibilities as the Scrum Master is to coach the product owner on getting the backlog ready. So you'll need to determine whether all of the PBIs actually meet that ready state. You'll also need to think about whether or not the backlog is ordered. Sometimes the product owner will add user stories to the top of the backlog at the absolute last minute right before the sprint planning meeting and those PBIs will not be ready. Ideally, you'll know that before you get into the planning meeting so you can construct a plan about what you're going to do. Next, you need to collect the past performance of the development team. This is often done using velocity or story points, but it doesn't have to be. There may be other measures that you use to determine the past performance of the team. You need to carry this into the sprint planning meeting to help the team forecast the work that it's going to be able to get done during this sprint so that it can create the sprint backlog. You also need to prepare materials and equipment, a projector if you need it, an easel pad, pens and papers, 3M sticky notes, and so forth. Finally, start reviewing the planning agreement. You need to make sure that you understand how the team has agreed to go through planning. We'll be discussing agreements in section five of this course. Also review your observations journal and make sure that you have any observations about the planning meeting at the top of your mind. And then make an entry in your expectations and emotions journal. What do you expect out of the planning meeting and what emotions are you experiencing right now? Prepare the PCAS, what we discussed during the facilitation overview, the first video in this section. So here's an example PTA, purpose, time, and agenda for a sprint planning meeting that takes two hours long. You start off by saying the purpose. The purpose of this meeting is to collectively arrive at a sprint goal and sprint backlog. Time, this is a one week sprint, so we will spend two hours in this meeting. John and Alice will need to leave 15 minutes before the end of the meeting. And then the agenda, the opening takes five minutes, the planning what is 15 minutes, the planning how, 80 minutes, including a 10 minute break. And then in the summary, we'll take 20 minutes and we'll have a goal review and a backlog review. When you finish 
the planning what, you'll know what your sprint backlog is, so then you can add additional detail to the planning how. For example, if you have 10 product backlog items in the sprint backlog, then you can divide up those 80 minutes into 10 eight minute sections. I would specifically create a list which shows those 10 backlog items and the fact that the team has eight minutes to get through each one of them. And then you would check off each one as the team went through it. So make sure to update your agenda with additional information as it becomes available. So that's the before, what you need to do before you walk into the sprint planning meeting. Let's talk about the during. What are you doing during? Here's a quick overview of what happens in the planning meeting. First, remember that the output of the sprint planning meeting is a sprint goal, which is typically one or two sentence and something that's agreed by the team and the product owner. And of course, the sprint backlog, what items the team thinks it's going to be working on and completing during that sprint. The planning meeting is divided into two parts, the planning what and the planning how. In the planning what, the team decides what product backlog items or user stories will be completed in that sprint and what is the sprint goal. During the planning how, the team decides how it's going to work together on each product backlog item and how it's going to get to a product increment. So let's discuss each of those in turn. So when you open, you open with PTA as always, purpose, time, and agenda. You can review the sprint planning agreement if necessary with the team and we'll describe how to create the planning agreement in section five of this course. And then you can review any team norms if necessary. And again, we'll describe team norms in section five of this course. So here's the planning what. During the planning what, you start off by presenting the past performance. If you're using velocity to track team's past performance, you might say, the velocity during the last three sprints has been 45, 50, and 55. The average sprint velocity has been 50. What you're doing here is simply recalling what has been done in the past without any judgment or opinion. You're just reporting that information to the team so that they're aware of it. Now you ask the team to select the velocity for this particular sprint. You might say, based on everything you know about what is happening this sprint, vacations, new team members, etc., what is your forecast for this sprint's velocity? So the team will now select a velocity. If they think they're going to hit the average, they'll say 50. If they think they'll be above average, they might say 55 or 60. If they think they're below, 45 or 40. It depends on the circumstances. The team gets to select its velocity. And then based on the forecast of velocity, add stories from the top of the product backlog to the sprint backlog until the total number of story points in the sprint meets but does not exceed the forecasted velocity. This, of course, assumes that all of the product backlog items are ready. If they're not ready, then you'll need to think about what to do. For example, you might have a team size a story that has not been sized, but it's yet at the top of the backlog. Finally, ask the team if it agrees with the sprint backlog. Is the team comfortable with this sprint backlog? Possibly do a fist of five, make sure that everyone is at three or above. If everything is working properly, this will take 15 minutes. Of course, if you need to size a story or get more information, or there's other problems, it will take longer. But if you know what the velocity is, all the product backlog items are ready, this section of the meeting will take about 15 minutes. So here's some of the problems that can occur during the planning what phase. The product backlog items may not be ready. So you'll know this as part of your before preparation. You'll have spoken to the PO and you will know if the PBIs are not ready. So before you walk into the meeting, you can determine and implement the best way to proceed. You can size stories which are not sized. You can add information to incomplete stories. You can split stories. And of course, you can always push that story back. And in fact, as the Scrum Master, you have the authority to protect the team from doing things which don't make sense, such as starting to work on a story that they do not understand. Another problem is that the team cannot agree on sprint goal or backlog. So this is, of course, part of the planning agreement what do you do when the team gets stuck? You as the facilitator help and support the team in getting unstuck. One idea which we'll discuss in detail during the team agreements that we'll discuss in section five is that you can implement some default rules when you get stuck. If you get stuck, here's what you do. So make sure to be prepared 
for these sorts of planning what problems and make entries into your observations journal when they happen. Let's turn now to the planning how. So going into the planning how, you have the sprint goal that was created during the planning what, and you have the sprint backlog, which was created during the planning what. So go ahead and update the agenda for the planning how section, often with each PBI. And then go ahead and cycle through each PBI. Clearly note what PBI is being worked on, check it off on the agenda, assist the team in determining how it will record the way it is decomposing work, listen for roadblocks, make sure that all team members are participating, no wallflowers, make sure that no one is dominating the conversation, no bulldozers, and create a parking lot if necessary when the team gets off track. And then at the end of each PBI, make sure to check with the team. Is everyone satisfied with the plan for this PBI? And then update the agenda. Tell the team if it is on schedule, ahead of schedule, or behind the schedule. Now remember, that during the planning how, if the team is using user stories, it will be doing tasking during this section. So the team doesn't need to complete all of the tasks and volunteer for all of the tasks. It just needs to get enough done to start the sprint. The first few days of the sprint need to get through planning how. So here are some problems that you might occur during planning how. The team dives into technical details. The team discovers that a PBI is too difficult to complete in the sprint. The team wants to sign up for all work. So make sure to support the team and create a structure that makes sense for them. So after the sprint is over, check to make sure that the sprint backlog is in place. Are you using a task board? Are all the PBIs there? Are you using software? Are all the PBIs or user stories there? This is a step that's often missed and immature scrum teams will often make a mistake of dropping a story, dropping tasks, dropping a PBI. So make sure to check this. Post the sprint goal in a highly visible area so that everyone knows what it is. Follow up on any team requests that come out of the planning meeting. For example, they might have asked you to set up a technical problem solving session. If there are any key findings or observations about the way the team worked together during planning, carry those into the retrospective. And finally, update your observations, expectations, and emotions journal. Remember that during the sprint planning, you are a facilitator. You are not a doer. You do not own the success of the sprint. You are not responsible for creating the sprint goal or sprint backlog. What you are responsible for is creating a structure which supports the team in doing their best thinking and best work. So here's where you are now. The next step is to watch the third major video in this section, the retrospective meeting facilitation, and complete the three homework assignments. And summarize here what we've talked about today, we worked through the before, during, and after of facilitating the sprint planning meeting, so you know exactly what you need to do to be successful, and we've identified potential problems and solutions. Feel free to post questions in the question area, or talk about them during the monthly call or the one-on-one -on -one coaching call. Enjoy.